All right, today we're going to talk about inverse functions. And before we get started, I'm going to tell you about these two functions just to illustrate the difference between a function that has an inverse and a function that does not have an inverse. Okay, so this first function represents the height of a ball that has been tossed up into the air from a height of one meter at an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Okay, so we have, we have this function for height in terms of time t in seconds, and the height is in meters. Okay, so the first question is just asking, what's the height of the ball after three and a half seconds? And that's pretty straightforward, right? We can just take the height function and uh, put in 3.5, right? And we can just calculate it. And we're going to get one output, right? So, oops, 3.5 squared plus 20 times 3.5 plus 1. Okay, so all we need to do now is put that into our calculator, and um, I got 9.75 meters. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now the second question here is asking, um, how many seconds after being tossed was the ball's height 16 meters? So. Well, we can figure that out too. It's it's essentially what we're, instead of being given the input to this function, the input to this function being t, we're given the output of the function. We're given the height, okay? So, so what we're gonna do is, so we know the height is 16, and uh, we gotta find t value, a t value, or more than one t value, <laughs> that satisfies this equation. So we have, um, so we're just gonna solve that. We're gonna figure that out. So um, we just put um, 16 in for the height, and then um, that has to be equal to negative 5t squared plus 20t plus 1. All right, so we can solve that. I'm just going to move everything over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to get 5t squared minus 20t, and then 16 minus 1 gives me um, 15. And that equals 0. And I'm going to factor out a 5. That'll make it a little easier t squared minus 4t plus 3. And this is just a quadratic equation that is easily factorable. We don't need the quadratic formula in this case. So um, t is equal to, oops, hang on a minute. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of my, myself here. Um, let's see. Okay, so we can factor this thing into t minus 1 times t minus 3 equals 0. So that's telling us that t is equal to 1 or 3 seconds, okay? Which makes sense because, you know, the ball's going to go up and then it's going to come down, so it's probably going to pass 16 meters at two different points, right? So um, this height function takes an input of time and gives us height, right? So if we want an inverse of this function, it would it would take height and give us time, right? So if we want an inverse function, it would take height and give us time. But in this case, there's no way it could be a function, right? Because, um, you know, remember that a function has a unique output for every input, okay? So if we're putting in height to some inverse function and we're getting two different outputs, it's not a function, okay? So there's a little problem <laughs> there. Okay, let's take a look at the second function here. All right, so we have here a car that was purchased for $20,000 and it's depreciating at 20% per year. And um, the car's value in dollars is given by this function here. Um, v of t is equal to 20,000 times 0.8 to the t power, okay, where t is in years. Okay, so, um, First question is again just straightforward, asking us what's the value of the car after two years? Okay, so um, v at two is equal to 20,000 times 0 0.8 um, squared, right? And if we put that into a calculator, I get um, $12,800. Okay, so that's our value after two years. Now, the second question is asking, um, how many years will it take for the car to reach a value of 8,000? Okay, so now we're given the output of the function and we want to know what the input was, right? So so we can we can solve that just like we did the, the other one. Um, 
We got 20,000. Um, so 8,000 is equal to 20,000 times 0 0.8 to the t. And um, let's see, let's divide both sides by 20,000. So if I do that, I get 0 0.4 is equal to 0. Oops, 0 0.8 to the t. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's a decimal point. Um, and uh, then to solve this, you have to remember how to, how to use logarithms, okay? Now I could use a natural log or I could use a base 10 log. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to use a natural log. So I take the natural log of both sides. So ln of 0 0.4 is equal to, um, uh, let's just write it, ln of uh, 0 0.8 to the t. Okay, and remember, I got to remember the properties of logarithms. All right, so let me scroll down just a bit here. Um, so by taking the log of both sides, that allows me to bring this t out front. So I can rewrite the right-hand side as t times the natural log of 0.8. And then the left-hand side stays the same. And now I can solve for t. So t is equal to um, the natural log of 0 0.4 over the natural log of uh, 0 0.8. And if I put that into my calculator, I get 4.1 years. Okay. All right, so I got one output. That's good. <laughs> so this is an example of a function that has an inverse. Okay. So um, when I when I give it the output, right? So this 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 function v of t has an output of v value, right, for an input of t. But um, when I put in a value of t, you know, I could rearrange this and come up with a function that has an input of t that gives, or um, has an input of value that gives me time, okay? So I've graphed both of these functions down here just to kind of, again, illustrate the difference between these two functions. So you can see, um, you know, this height function for the ball, I put in, um, I give it an input and it gives me one output. So the original function is a function, right? But if I reverse that and I give it height, I do not get one output. I get two outputs, right? So I get two different values that, uh, two different time values that would have that height. So the inverse, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot write an inverse function for this, um, uh, for this, uh, time, for the time versus the height. Okay. All right. And then for the second um, function for value, I could, I could, because if I put, okay, so we know the, the function itself is a, is a function because when I give it one input, I get one output. And, um, and if I go the other way, if I give it the value, I can also, um, get one value for time. Okay, so that's the difference between a, a function that has an inverse and one that doesn't have an inverse. So um, I'm going to have you read this next page. All right. And then um, so just read through this. Make sure you understand um, uh, what is an inverse, um, what functions have an inverse, understand this horizontal line test and how it works. And um, and also, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see that we can often take a function that is not invertible and make it invertible if we just restrict the domain. Okay, so make sure you understand that. And then um, uh, look ahead at this next example. And it's fairly straightforward. You could probably do it on your own, but um, I will post a, another video for, for this example.